if I could only welcome you to Madagascar for real and say, look at my luscious jungle of orangus and angraecoids. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just do kind of wishful thinking um, because we do happen to have some of them here in Spain. Oh, it would be so nice to see them in Madagascar. I have seen these in Kenya. They grow there as well. Um, not all of the ones I have in front, but you know, the, the Sesquipedali, the Magdalena, those. Those I've seen growing in Kenya. Orangus mysticidii and Fastuosa, not so much. And Leonis, neither. But I have some maintenance to do. Um, besides that, a while ago I had um, did a, a potting up video of my Fastuosa and my mysticidii. So I thought, I'm just gonna pull these out and uh, we can have a look at them, see how they're doing, and I'll give you a brief update on those. But here's my two Leones. I have been to the Comore Islands, but I have not seen these in the wild, so I wouldn't know. But uh, we do have a smaller version, which I believe is the Madagascar type, and then we have a larger version. We'll look at that a bit closer. And that is, to my understanding, just by the size, judging by the size, that could be the one from the Comores. Not 100% sure, but that was the plan in buying two. And here I have the Didieri, my little itty bitty Didieri. And it is doing fabulously since I've put it into Orchid Top. And I'll have a little chat about Orchid Top as well. So let's look at Fastuosa because I need to water it. So I have a mask over a pot that it is semi hybrid all right there's holes in the back but for ease of transportation i look i think it looks kind of smart to cover it in a mask like this so that's why it might look the same with my repiculus lalias down there um, i guess there was a little bit of confusion about my setup but you can see my repiculus lalias there's like little itty bitty holes they are in semi-hydro, but they're also potted up in these little eight centimeter pots. And then I put a mask around it just because it, I don't know, it feels better in my hand to carry it. So from the repotting video, when I took it off the mount, look at it. I have the light source coming from behind it. It used to grow pendant this way, if that makes sense hanging down and I laid it the opposite way and now I have the light source coming from back here and you can see how the new leaf is curling its way up and around eventually long term I hoping hoping I can bring this through and get it established in a pot I don't mind if the plant actually makes a curve and grows in that direction so that's long term. These guys are incredibly slow growing, so I there's plenty of time. Having said that, I do want to just point out if you can see how that new leaf has grown considerably. It is now almost full size and it is curving towards the light source from back here. Okay, Mr. City Eye. Same thing, I took it off the mount. It was growing new roots and I thought this would be awesome timing to get it established in a pot. I have it in a taller pot because the roots are kind of known for just going straight and growing straight. They're not sort of branching roots. Um, so I gave it a bit of a taller pot, hoping that it would take. And I'm in a bit of uh, mixed emotions here. I have a bit of lava rock here in which I was holding a root down. But they are very, very reluctant to extend their roots once they stop growing roots. You see there? These roots are viable, but Orangus mysticidii, to my understanding, are very, very reluctant to extend roots that have stopped growing. So it is absorbing moisture which is great, but you can also see down here, this was the root in question when I repotted it. This root was growing 
and it has stopped growing. So yeah, I lost that root, which is a shame. But the leaves have grown beautifully. This was damaged when it was too close to my blurple lights. I got a little bit ahead of myself. So that was my fault. But other than that, there has been no spotting, no degradation, nothing on the foliage. And I'm so pleased about that because that could give a signal that it's not happy. Something else I want to show you. Can you see? It is spiking. Look at that. One spike right here and another spike in there, which I'm keeping an eye on so that it doesn't go against the cup. This one is growing. I have it placed. The light source is coming from this direction. So it's not in the opposite direction because just before the repotting of this one, and that was one of my one of my reasons for repotting it, I lost four leaves in quick succession while it was still mounted. And I was very concerned I was not going to be able to keep up with the need of this orchid as it grew larger. So that was one of my concerns and uh, why I potted it up to, to try it this way. The leaves have done phenomenally well, very happy about that. And let me just clarify, the Fastuosa is in Ceramus only. And the Orangus, because the roots are a little bit larger, not as stringy as the Fastuosa, the Orangus is in Lecca and Ceramus. The Ceramus is more towards the middle where there were roots that were always used to wet moss. And then I topped it off with some Lecca. So that's the mixture of those. Two spikes coming along. Very nice. I normally only get spikes for this one in November. So sometimes it does happen that within, in a course of 12 months, I get two bloomings out of this plant, but we'll see. It has been disturbed and these are notorious for not liking their roots disturbed. Hence also my reason for potting it up when I did. It's unfortunate that I lost that growing root tip of the Mr. Sidi. The owners here is looking nasty, and that's what we're here to do to change. But the root growth has been phenomenal. This one dropped two or three leaves in close succession as well. They looked like this from the start and then just fell off. But it was very, very poor on the root front. So now that I have more roots, I'm sort of wondering why are you doing it again? I don't know, but I'm watching. I did get a new leaf, which is great. This one seems to grow slower than the big one in the back there. But anyway, I'm gonna remove the moss and I'm going to get this tray off. It is a little humidity provider, which I think is fabulous. I love orchid top. I'll talk about them just now. And then let's have a look at the bigger version. Looks like there's a leaf gonna go eventually down here and this one grew this new leaf so far since the beginning of spring let's say from february march onwards and it's brought out this leaf right afterwards so it must have found its mojo and i'm very happy about that because if it's going to drop a leaf then now i have to think am i giving it enough fertilizer does it need more Right now it's getting 300 ppm every day. And then in the afternoon I kind of flush the pot, but it's not a flush, it's just me with a spray going around the edges and around the sides. Because this one came with extremely long roots and that is why Orchid Top is so awesome because you can grow hydroponically, semi-hydroponically with Orchid Top. The difference being if you don't have a root system, then you pot the orchid up with the roots where they are but make sure you have a wicking material or base and that helps get the water up out of the tray. If you have long enough roots for the container and you don't put any media in and you position your orchid with the roots touching the bottom and then you put your media around it, 
and those roots at the bottom will then help themselves to what is the reservoir down here. I love these pots. Having said that, they're also quite notorious about their roots being messed around with, so I try to get all my and Graycombs into these orchid tops because push comes to shove, if they outgrow their pot, then the idea is there is a minimal disturbance on the roots when you lift them out to transplant them. But this has been in here now, let me see, I got it in October 2019, so we're not quite a year yet and it's been growing roots like happy days. You can see all the new roots down in there. Those are the new roots. They were not there because I had plenty of roots with this one on the bottom. So these are great newcomers and I shall be changing the moss. Mid-season moss change, just to be sure. Let's take it off carefully and have a look. Look at those root tips. And I want to maintain them and not have this nasty moss take them out with acidity. So I'm just gonna leave that there for now before, and let's go on to Didieri, and then we'll do the cleanup. All right, let me get the base off because I want to wash that. Didieri needed a lot of help from the beginning. I wasn't too happy a camper. You can see a very, very old microfiber, which I will remove and replace with moss only. But you can also now see how it is bending. Let me turn it the other way. You see how it's bending. It's life sources on this side, which is fine. I don't mind if it wants to bend that way. Of course, we prefer a straight plant, but hey, in nature, they don't normally go, grow bolt upright either. In the winter, it will correct itself because this goes under my blurple lights and they're right above it. So it will correct itself eventually. But it's doing well, and I say that because I finally have a root to show going all the way down the back. So there one grew here, another one grew here, and this one. Oh. I hope this one makes it all the way into what will be its reservoir. That would be perfect because there are no roots to speak of down at the bottom. This has been a daily maintenance thing of keeping it moist and misted up on the top here. And you can see I lost two previous roots. These are old, but I'm not going to fuss with them. I'm going to leave them because it's all inorganic media. So there's no harm, no foul, just leaving them in there. But we will refresh the moss here as well. That's what I like to see. And then you can see from the front and the back that there is progress in the root department. And if this one decides to just travel down, that's perfectly fine. I'm just gently, gently peeling that off. I will not be peeling off the microfiber. It might look nasty, but it is inorganic and it's not doing the roots any harm. And I can see one has actually grown against it. And I'm not gonna disturb that. In the time that this has been in the pot, I have substantial roots to show. Look. So despite the microfiber being nasty, that's not the reason why these roots failed. These were the first roots that failed due to the disturbance, I guess, the repotting. I'm leaving this microfiber on. It's done a fantastic job to keep the top humid enough for me. This is the latest root to grow, and it was in the sphagnum moss, happy as Larry. I'm very pleased to see that. Here's one where the root tip has stopped. Okay, that's a bit concerning. Let me see its orientation now. It shouldn't have stopped. It's not facing the warmest part of the shelf. All right. Here's one that you can see the root extended. That's great. I love that. That's the one that extended and is growing out. And then here's one tucked up against the microfiber. I am definitely leaving that alone. And this one down here. What are you up to? You have a growing tip. So we'll leave you alone as well. Let's get you situated. 
Let's see if I need to move the microfiber back a bit. I am leaving those compromised roots on. I'm not going to mess with it. Orchid top was invented by a gentleman whose mom was in despair. She often complained that she couldn't grow orchids properly. So he decided to look into what orchid roots need. And he came up with air, lots of air. But also, we need to be able to grow undisturbed as best as possible. So he came up with a prototype. And if you go on the webpage, you will see it's really quite cool, actually, how he developed these orchid tops. And they come in three different sizes. This one, these ones being the smallest. So these, then there's a medium and then there's a large. Certainly, certainly a worthy endeavor on his part because the product absolutely delivers. Okay, DDR is done. Let's look at Leonis from Madagascar. I love Madagascar. Never been there personally, but now I'm referring to the movie. Anything to do with giraffes, I'm all over it. <laughs> can't flaunt King Louis, and you can't deny the penguins their spotlight. <laughs> but what's his Melman? Melman, he's my superstar. So you can see my little Leonis that I believe is from Madagascar is doing quite well. It doesn't need the support anymore, but I'm leaving that in. It's not bothering it, but I would like it to stop dropping bottom leaves. Now I'm assuming the other leaf drops were it was putting all the energy into growing roots. And we have quite a few to show for in the last, let's say, when did I moss these? When was the last time I mossed? Hang on a second. I moss. I don't moss in the winter, so just before spring. So maybe I moss this in January or February, something like that. And they've done well. I did not have all these roots when I mossed them last. So come on then, let's get you tucked in and secure. And stop messing about with your uncovered roots. It's a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. But there is a breeze. And these guys, to my understanding, will not appreciate their roots drying out for any length of time. They're definitely not established yet in my collection. I like to see them a little bit bigger and stronger. They have, none of them have bloomed except my two Arangas. They've bloomed for me. This one being a first time bloomer this year, the Fastuosa. So there you are, Leones, all tucked up and ready to go. So here are the little plates. I didn't show them before, they were quite nasty looking. But you see these little hooks and catches there? And you set it on and you can hear how the pot settles into the nooks. Then you turn them and they're locked in. So you can carry them around like this as well and not do too much not make too much of a mess so that's them I think I covered everything if not I shall put up a little bit of a few tags here and there oh yes I was talking about the water I'm not putting any fertilized water in these two Leonis and Didieri because the roots don't reach the bottom and I don't want salt accumulating there's no point I miss them from in the mornings with fertilized water so that the roots get the nutrients but if I want added humidity down here is where I put unfertilized water just to have them have a humid base around them all right thank you so much for joining me I hope everything was in focus and that this time I didn't get the microphone stuck in my collar yes we're working on it. I really appreciate having you here. Your patience with me is also very much appreciated. And thank you so much for your support and for watching this video. Take care, everybody. Bye.